हरे कृष्णा राधे राधे जाने भी कैन यू हियर मी यस हरे कृष्णा सर हरे कृष्णा दिविशा भार्गव एवरीबॉडी इज हियर हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जय हो भार्गव जी वेलकम एंड वी विल सी आवर पीपल कमिंग सो इट्स अक्षर तीर्थ so happy akshar tit to everybody it's a very auspicious uh, day today to start something new to learn something new um so we'll wait a little bit for people to come uh, just an overview we uh janavi you can uh, start with the chanting okay <laughs> Okay, Harry Bowl. So today I'll be answering some commonly asked questions about chanting. So the first question that I'm going to answer today is how do you focus when chanting and how do you know whether you're chanting properly or not? So in this age of Kali Yuga, we are not supposed to be doing various meditations on the different chakras in the body because this is very difficult to accomplish. We are simply supposed to meditate on the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. this is the biggest meditation that we can do so in order for us to stay focused when we sit down to chant we should meditate on the sound vibration of the mantra that is being spoken similarly we can also focus our mind on a darshan of the lord or some nice past time of his so to increase our concentration when chanting we should listen to the voice recording of shila prabhupad's chanting so that we surround ourselves with this maha mantra we should also chant in the morning as opposed to the afternoon or the night time because in the morning our mind is the sharpest we should also be chanting in a clean environment so we can prevent any distractions we should chant near tulsi maharani so we can gain some blessings from her and finally we should chant with other devotees in a group so that we create a focused mood which allows us to concentrate only on chanting the maha mantra and also by chanting with other devotees we get to see how other spiritually advanced devotees chant so we can learn from them finally we will also we will be able to tell if we are chanting properly by seeing if our interest in krishna consciousness increases when we are chanting a set number of rounds daily and when we finish that number if we feel a sudden desire to chant more than that number then that shows that our taste for chanting has increased as well as our taste for the holy name if through chanting your interest in listening to krishna katha or to perform service also increases then that shows that we are chanting very well now let us all chant one round together nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vidat swami ti namine namaste sarvate deve gauravani prachayane nirvishesha sinnivadi pachada deshatayane जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री रेता गदा श्री वसादि गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम रे राम 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 रे हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम रे राम 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 रे हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद शिद्वेता गिधार शिवा श्री गौर भक्त बिंद गीताय गो प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बो so thank you for ch- for chanting together aapka sab ka swagat karte hain is shanivar ka khas vishesh taur pe aaj to akshay tirtya hai to ye utsav jo akshay tirtya apne vaishnav sabhyata mein hum log kaise manate hain ye chandan yatra se shuru hote hain aaj apne is kon temple mein in all our temples in in davan area all over the world we do the chandan yatra which starts today so this is the third day uh, and the uh, the fourth for uh, bright fourth night of vaishakha jo uh, vaishakha maas hai and it's um, uh, shukla paksha so it's a four bright fourth night so um, yeah, it's a third day uh, so it's very auspicious because there are so many things that happen on this day and uh, usually in our tradition hamare jo jab bhi hum ek shubh kar karte hain to murat dekhte hain to aaj jo hai koi zarurat nahi hai murat dekhne ke liye wo pura punya pura shubh din hai aaj to khas aaj parshuram parshuram's birthday bhi hai lord parshuram ji prakat hue the aaj 
और व्यास देव जी ने महाभारत का रचना शुरू किया था आज ही महाभारत लिखने शुरू किया था व्यास देव जी दिस इज द फर्स्ट डे व्हेन व्यास देव स्टार्टेड राइटिंग द महाभारत गंगा जो गंगा देवी इज द डे व्हेन गंगा अपीयर्ड ऑन द प्लैनेट अर्थ ऑन दिस प्लैनेट सो दिस इज अ अ वेरी स्पेशल डे वेयर we should start something new if you want to start something new it's a good day to start it and it will always uh, whatever auspicious whatever punya whatever pious activity you do today it's to, it stays with you forever that's a, a special um thing about akshatita so it's allow it's prescribed in the scripture ke aaj hum log daan kare yeah we can do, feed the brahmanas Uh, you can mix so so nice mix nice prashad offered to krishna and feed one brahmana or you can mix nice kheer sweet rice and offered to brahmanas you can give dan you do yagya or we can chant the holy name the greatest yagya in this age kali is chanting of the holy name so uh, you can always ex- chant extra rounds today and you can continue with that prabhu so, ji akshay yeah. titya was yesterday or it is today uh in uh, in america yesterday and today's in india so we are celebrating both uh, since most of our students are from india that's why i'm mentioning that oh so, that's good <laughs> yeah so we that's what i'm telling them so yeah, thank you prabhuji yeah uh, so this uh, this small story uh, i want to just tell you a little story because we don't have much time i have to finish the powerpoint so there is a story about a brahmana who was uh, 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 usually the brahmanas are very poor and uh, they, they, they live by very simple life a yeah, simple living high thinking if you complicate your life it's difficult to have high thinking so usually the brahmanas are very highly elevated people but their their life is very simple so but and and he had a very nice wife very good wife so whatever little money the, the brahmana had he would spend uh, and uh, they didn't have any kids at that, that time so uh, so he didn't have any kids so he went to uh, vashishta muni uh, to at the request of the wife to ask why we are so miserable and we don't have any kids and everything we asked to ask uh, about the previous life what he was uh, you know vashishta muni could see in his past life that he was a very rich person in a previous life at the pishe janme ka katha hai bata rahe hain ki bahut ameer vyakti the and uh, had so many children but he was very miserable bahut confused the वो कुछ पैसा खर्च नहीं करता था ना दान पुण्य नहीं करते थे और वो इवन अपने बच्चों के ऊपर वो स्पेंड नहीं करते थे कुछ भी तो इसीलिए इस जन्म में वो बहुत धृंद ब्राह्मण बहुत गरीब ब्राह्मण हुए और उसका कोई पुत्र बच्चे भी नहीं थे तो लेकिन वो ब्राह्मण पूछ रहे हैं लेकिन कैसे मुझे एक अच्छा पत्नी कैसे मिले तो फिर वो वशिष्ठ मुनि कहते हैं कि तुमने पिछले जन्म में ये इसी मास में वैशाख मास में पांच दिन के लिए तुमने व्रत किया था ब्राह्मण फिर जो मुनि है ये जो वशिष्ठ मुनि उसको बताया कि advised him that you have to complete your uh, your vrata your which which seven days more you had a 12 days of um, uh, tapasya to do but you complete only five days so please complete the seven days and uh, and that is was the devotion of lord krishna by the blessing of krishna everything would be fine so then the brahmana went back to home and performed this uh, with his wife performed this la- remaining seven days of uh, vrat of fasting and then uh, by the end of the fast day and uh, he you know he got whatever his desires were able being fulfilled and he had a nice time on this planet and went back home to god and to krishna so that is uh, one story that i want to share just like to uh, increase your enthusiasm uh, in serving the lord on this day and uh, dropadi also uh, uh, you know got this akshay patra the pot that he used to cook for and feed endlessly anybody uh, so that was given to 
Dopadi on this day by Surya, sun, the sun god. So this is very auspicious day. And then we do Chandan Yatra. So our Lord is, is smeared with Chandan in all the temples you would see. And if you have at home and it's very hot in India, so you can always smear some Chandan to the uh, Lord body. And if you have deities made up, a Pachadatu is better, but in the marble uh, deities and the uh, uh, other type of deities is not proper because it will spoil the paint and spoil the marble and spoil the, if especially with Jagannath, you should never put. We can just touch a little bit, uh, just for significantly. So uh, that was for Akshay Theta. And uh, please uh, uh, do something special and start something new if you want to. Your students, almost of you are all students. So if you want to be good students and learn something, start something new today. Uh, you know, I learned some new shloka. Or if you're starting a new chapter and your studies also, you can start doing something new today. So please go ahead with that. Um, let me share my screen for uh, what we've been uh, doing recently. Last week, we talked about time and I'm continuing with time with more details. So let me see if I can uh, share my screen with all these um, one second uh, if you have any question in the meantime i can take it uh, uh, just wanted to make sure if i have the right powerpoint uh, and let me see one second So we welcome welcome everybody first of all. Uh, Janavi, can you welcome welcome everyone? Any new person coming on the on the platform? In the meantime, I can just check. Uh, yeah. Haribol, everyone, welcome to the class. And uh, I want to go to make some. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So my PowerPoint is here. This one is there. This is. Uh... Let me see if I can share this one. And then Vedic time. Okay, very good. And then we start slideshow from beginning. Okay, just like to have a small review. Uh, give me five, Janu, if you can see my PowerPoint. Good, right, that's nice. So we, we last week we talked about uh, Kal, the Vedic time, and how the concept, Vaishnav concept of time is given, is given as in Bhagavad Gita, Aksharam Akaro Smihi Dvanda Samashkashyacha Am Avakshaya Kalo Dhatta Vishwato Mukham. Uh, Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita of letters, uh, I am the letter A among compound words, uh, dual compounds. I, I am dual compound words in Sanskrit, and I am also in existential time and of creatures. I am Brahma. So we can see that Krishna comes in the form, and we talk about how Krishna comes and destroys everything at the, at the end of the course of time. So, uh, we, uh, we talk about this, like Lord Krishna, time I am the destroyer of the world. According to Gita and other Vedic literatures, is conceivably energy of the Supreme Lord through which he ultimately destroys everything. So we have to be careful to not see Krishna in as destruction. We want to example I gave. Who can remember, tell me the example that I gave last time about uh, uh, when God Krishna comes in the form of depth or in terms of time. As an example, I gave, uh, if anybody remember. Guruji, can I? Yes, uh, please. So last time you have given the example that uh, like cat, Very how good. cat carries his uh, kitten. Yeah, very and nice. Holding softly and uh, with precaution, and uh, how the cat carries mice with uh, uh, very fiercely catching it, snatching it. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so that's 
Yeah, thank you so much. That's with, yes, that's a good student <laughs> to remember. It. So, yeah, we have to remember that we should not be like that. We should not be like that. We should not हम लोग आखिरी भगवान के रूप को मौत के हिसाब देखना है। We have to be like very at the end that we can chant the name of of the Lord and we leave our body uh, nicely in the by uttering the name and remembering the Lord. So uh, we talk about how the different incarnations uh, uh, of the Lord appears and uh, it can even limit itself. There's no limitation for the different incarnations and there's no limitation for the Lord. So time doesn't apply in the spiritual world. Time can apply only in the material world, not in the spiritual world. And we also talk about this in these three worlds, there are different elements. Our time is also one of the elements. And the Bhagavad Gita also talks about time. The subject matter of Bhagavad Gita is Bhagavan. Atma, uh, Prakriti, time, right? So time also is part of it and, and action, karma. So uh, we talk about the theory of relativity, how uh, it was propounded by Marx, uh, Planck, and Alfred uh, Bachelor before as Einstein, and how this concept of, of uh, relativity, where time dilates and contracts, is in our Vedic literature that time has always been understood as a relative concept rather than a static concept. Brahma once one minute equals to humans six million solar years, and we're going to find the details today uh, that I promise you to understand. And we talk about atomic time is measured according to its covering a particular atomic space. So we talk about time with respect to space. The time covers unmanifest aggregate of atoms is called great time. So we have time and space or two correlative terms. Time is measured in terms of its covering a certain space of atoms. Standard time is calculated in terms of the movement of the sun. So we're going to understand these two concepts so of time. So that's why we have different calculation in the Vedic uh, um, tradition. Uh, that's uh, the other exercise I gave you. You guys didn't understand what the details are because one is calculating time in terms of the Suya Siddhanta, in terms of the sun going, movement of the sun. And, but the other type of time is being calculated by the space occupied um, and, and atoms. So today uh, we're going to talk about computation of time. How do you calculate time? Is there like a big clock or uh, be with, how how do you do that? So this is very interesting, uh, and this is a modern concept of time. So the scientific standard of time at micro level on a scale of second, a minute, hour was based on the Earth's period of rotation. So the Earth is rotating. Really, really, really rotate. करते हैं. तो उसके माध्यम से हम लोग calculate करते थे. So the computation of a second was determined based on the above standard as 1 over 86,400 of the mean solar day. So one day, right? How the in 24 hours, right, is going around and it was calculated as this particular uh, uh, ratio. So any, one, any volunteer who wants to read further, I want you guys to be engaged in reading. So I think Divisha is here. Divisha, yes, can you read uh, where I stopped? However, scientific researchers. You can see my screen. Yes, Prabhuji. Can you go ahead? Read. Yes, sir. However, scientific researchers revealed that the Earth's rate of rotation was irregular and was slowing down, which made it necessary for the International Astronomical Union to revise the definition of second as. 1 by 31, 556, 925.9747 of the solar year in progress at the noon of December, th December 31, 1899. The International Committee on Weights and Measures adopted the above standard in 1956. The high-precision uh, cesium beam atomic clock constructed in 1955 
made it possible to measure time accurately by utilizing the frequency of a special line produced by the cesium-133 atom. The official definition of the measurement of the second in the international system of units available since 1967 was based on the duration of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of cesium-133 atom. Mm. Thank you. So now you can see which direction people are trying to be more precise in calculating time. And they used atomic time based on the radiation, calculate the radiation of cesium-133. Uh, so uh, let's move on and see uh, in the Vedic concept where this atomic calculation also is there. So Atomic calculation is not something new in the Vedic uh, concept. It was there already. Uh, and the calculation being uh, the basis of modern computation of time began uh, in the 20th century. Whereas our Vedic literature is like so many thousands old, right? So many thousands and thousands. And in, the, in Bhagat Mahapurana, approximately uh, 3070 BC, based on, on the Hindu calculation of Kali Yuga, Right, which started from uh, 3002 BC. The sage Maitreya is explaining this concept of atomic time. And what he's saying? Any any volunteer who wants to read in red? Samira, you here? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Can you, the measure uh, of time which flits across the smallest particle of matter is called a parmanu, while that which extends over the whole lifespan of the universe is the longest measure of time. Yeah, thank you. So the measure of time is uh, is calculated with the smallest particle known as Paramanu. Okay, and um, we're going to talk more about that. And the Bhagavata goes from the level of Paramanu as follows, and has been explained. Two Paramanu make one Anu, one atom. So this is how the concept of space is, 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 is described here. Two paramanu make one atom, and three anos make one trasarenu, and three trasarenu makes a truti, and hundred trutis make a veda, and three vedas make a lava. So lava, three lovers make a nimish. A nimish is like a twinkle of an eye. You know, when you twinkle your eye, and you beat your eye like that, and uh, that's called a nimish. Now you can see a blink of an eye like that, a blinking of your eye is called a nimish. And now you can see how, how refined the calculation was. Now 15 kashtas, sorry, we were tweaking here. Three, nim three nimishas make a kasan, which is a moment. Five kasnas make a kashta. Shanas, Shanas Prabhu, K is silent here. It's sorry, called sorry. Shana. Yeah, Shana. Shana, thank you. Prabhu. Thank you, Matali. Shana. And then five Shanas make a Kashta. And 15 Kashtas make a Lagu. And 15 Lagus make a Nadik. A couple of Nadik make a Murat. And then now you know when we say Brahma Murat and all these different Muratas we talk about. And this is how it's been calculated. Um, and six of the seven Nadikas depending on the length of day or night, make a prahar, eh, which is one quarter of a day or night. And the day comprises a uh, four yamas, six hours period. 15 days constitute a fortnight. 15 days we calculate because are we, this, this is according to the lunar calendar. So that we have 15 uh, days of waxing of the moon, we, we say, uh, which is sukla paksha. And then other 15 days of waning of the moon, which is known as Krishna Paksha, which ends into uh, what do you call uh, Amavasya. So waxing is ends to Purnima, and after that, we, it, uh, it it's becomes smaller and smaller until Amavasya. So that's it's been explained here. Consider a fortnight, bright and dark, two months make a, a ritu. Next like season, Vasanta Ritu, Vashat Ritu, and then all these different Ritu. Six months constitute an iron. That's like why, when the sun is in the southern hemisphere, it's called Dakshinarian. And when the sun is in the north hemisphere, it's another Uttarayan. 
following the course of the sun, and two INRs constitute a day and a night of the gods. So the year on earth is variously known as Sambhasara, Paribhatsara, Idavatsara, Anubhatsara, and Bharatsara, calculated on the basis of the revolution of the sun and the Jupiter and the moon. So they see how detailed our, um, our uh, sages, Vedic sages, were, 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 were the, the way they were, the concept of time it was so exact and so precise. That's why they could devise uh, uh, the whole cosmology of the universe, because the calculation was very exact, and they knew ex exactly how they could devise all the different um, Vihan, uh, Vimans. Vimans means all the different airplanes that they had at this previous time. They were very, really, uh, very precisely made. But we lost that science in time. Now, here is, is a conversion of what we talk about in terms of seconds. We said one Paramanu is 60,730 60, of a second. Uh, so when, when I was uh, in, on your age, uh, when you guys are mostly in 10th, 11th, so I wanted, I uh, had a project, and my project was to, uh, it was, at that time, we didn't have uh, graphic uh, programs for designing on, in the computers, so I had to make my own uh, 3D design of the universe, so I was, I had a project to make a design of the universe, and the different planets, and it was a 3D. I had to make it in a 3D. And when you look at it, it should be looking at a 3D. So we, we learned how to make 3D drawings on paper. So, but I wanted to have exact uh, dimensions of the different planets of the universe. So I went to the university and uh, tried to talk with the physicist uh, lecturers there and try to find uh, data of the different planets. So. Then uh, they, were, they had astronomical units that they were count, counting the different in terms of light years, but they were all, all approximations. But I wanted exact uh, uh, measurements, so which was so hard to find. So by, by uh, uh, coming in contact with Bhagavatam in the Srimad Bhagavatam, when I started reading, then uh, I got the exact dimension of the universe, a cross section of the universe. I got the, diff the exact distances between the different planets and, uh, and so many details. I, then I realized that uh, real knowledge is in the Bhagavatam. So that's how I became a devotee by, uh, by uh, studying the Vedic cosmology. So we can see here that I was mentioning how their, their time calculation is in, in terms of not only in terms of uh, seconds or microseconds, in milliseconds, it's like 88.889 .88 milliseconds, like Nimesh, for instance. And, and uh, uh, Parmanu, we, 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 we calculated around at most approximately 60,000 or 50 per second. Truti, which is 29.696 microseconds. But look at Nimesh. Nimesh is 88.889 milliseconds. And we went, we went much more smaller than Nimesh in the beginning. So you can see that conversion here. So as you can get an idea how precise the Vedic literature was and how they were calculating time in such exact way. Uh, 45 Nimesh is one prana, uh, six prana is Vinadi, and 60 Vinadi is one Nadi, and 60 Nadi is one, Ahotra, one Ahuratra. So the equation of Vedic time uh, uh, in respect to modern time units at macro level is given like that. So I'll post this uh, uh, and uh, you can have a look at it in more detail. Now, the most common thing in our Vaishya tradition is uh, with the concept of yuga and yuga cycle. So yugas and yuga cycle, uh, this is how we have a, the concept of a whole creation and a whole existence. And, uh, and, uh, the main, everybody knows this, we have four yugas. Uh, it's, we have Satyug, Tetra, Dwapar, and Kali. So Satyug is also known as Krita Yuga. So history moves in a succession of great cycles. In the Vedic texts, these cycles is represented by this Divya Yuga, composed of these four yugas, is known one Divya Yuga. And uh, this is the Vedic cycle time. Uh, Lord Brahma is calculated uh, duration 
the, the whole creation of the universe and the whole duration is calculated like that. So as I always mentioned previously as well, that the Western concept of time is linear, right? But our concept of time is cyclic, a bit like the Greek also had a similar thing. Anybody who wants to read, uh, any volunteer who wants to read uh, this one? This. Any volunteer? Okay, go ahead, please. The Sanskrit term yug has been derived from yoga and yoga from some yoga or conjunction of heavenly bodies. So yuga implies conjunction of the heavenly bodies in the cosmos. Hindu astronomy speaks of the yugas and the mahayugas that lies for five to several thousand and millions of years. Let us concentrate here on the well-known four yugas, namely Satya, Treta, Dwapar and Kali. The Mahayuga, also known as Chatur Yuga, four yugas combined, comprising all four yugas, rotate in cyclical order in the ratio of four is to three is to two is to one. Thank you, Lisha. So you can see here, if you remember one, you can calculate the other one. So the Kali Yuga is 432 southern years. So you multiply this by two, you get 86400, 864,000 years for Dwapar Yuga. And then uh, you, uh, again, if you multiply this one, uh, 432 by three, then you will get 12, uh, what, 1,296,000 years. And if you multiply uh, 432,000 by four, then you will get 17, uh, what it is, uh, 1, 728, uh, 728,000 years. So all this all together, it comes to go in a Divya Yuga, or we can say four years together combined, or we can say also Chatur Yuga or Maha Yuga. And let's see that um, uh, in, in, uh, for Brahma, for, we'll see what happens in terms of Brahma age. We're going to calculate that. So one more thing here. Let me, uh, I added something. Yeah, the Chatur Yuga, the Maha Yuga, if you calculate, if you add all of them together in terms of human years, it will come to 4,320,000 years. So you can remember this figure. So I always remember Kali Yuk because then it's easy for me to remember. If you never need to remember, just remember the Kali Yuk is 4,320,000 years. And that all together, it's 4,320,000 years. So this is a very nice way to remember these things. So you don't forget. Now, as we progress from Satyug through Tetra to Dwapar to Kali, there's decline of man in all aspects of physical, mental, moral, spiritual, intellectual. So in Satyug, people were more uh, highly uh, advanced. Their, their brain, their everything was very, very advanced. They were more intelligent. They were more receptive. We had Shutri Dharan. Shutri Dharan means those people who once they hear something, they memorize it. The whole Bhagavatam, the whole, the whole Mahabharata, the whole scripture was just received by Sh Shruti. Uh, the whole Vedic literature was Shruti. So they would ha had the capacity of memorizing everything. Once it's being heard, it stays in your brain. But we age, as it passes from Satyug to Tetra to Dwapar to Kali, our memory it became smaller, a loss, a loss of memory, we can say. It didn't work as much as good as it was before. Our uh, physical, you know, our strength, bodily strength, our height, just like in Dwapar, you people were very high, maybe 10, 6 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet. People's physique was so strong. Uh, they would, could do tapasya. In such they would do tapasya for 50,000 years, 20,000 years in one place. They can sit and maintain because their body was so strong. They could do those type of tapasya. But we can't do that in this age of Kali because it's decreased. Our moral and spiritual values decline. Intellectual values decline. Our bhagya, opulence, our whatever Johamara bhagya me likha will be kam hoge. Uh, so according to Satya Yuga, is known as a golden age. So that's like in, uh, in Greek, you have the golden year. Also, we can say that Satya Yuga is, is like the golden age. And uh, Tetra Yuga is a silver age. Dwapar is a bronze age. And Kali Yuga is an iron age. 
As the Mahayug moves on cyclically in descending or an ascending order from Kali, we progress upward in ascending order through Dwapar, Tetra, and Sati. Any volunteer who wants to read the next paragraph? Uh, Himanshu? Anandani, oh. One second. Samira, okay, Samira. Samira, raise hand here. Okay, Samira. Other thousand Mahayog period is called Kalpa or yeah. a day of Brahma, the creator of the universe. Another 1000 Mahayog constitutes Brahma's one night. Thus, a cosmic day and the night of Brahma comprises 2000 Mahayog or two Kalpas. It is said that 71 cycles of Mahayog constitute one Manvantara at the end of which there is massive devastation and also further creation. We are believed to be in the seventh Manvantara, named Vevasvata after the name of Manu of this cycle. And the seven more Manvantras will be coming in order to complete one day of Brahma. Each Manvantara has been named after the Manu, being the first ruler of each Manvantara, beginning with Swayambhu, Swayambhu Manu, son of the self-born and ending with Indra Savarni Manu, son of Indra. Bra thank, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll stop you here. Uh, I want you to just comment a little bit on this. So we have to understand that uh, uh, these yuga cycles that we, that we uh, talk about, we have one thousand of those in one day of Brahma and we have one other thousand in one night of Brahma. And, uh, in, uh, and it says here, this is the cosmic day and night of Brahma. Cons consists of this 2000 Mahayuga that I was talking about. Now, there are 17 cycles of Mahayuga. Uh, and that constitute one Manavantara. Okay. Uh, and, and then in one, uh, at the end of which there's a massive devastation of every uh, one Manavantara. Uh, after these seven cycles, there's a devastation. And we are actually in the seventh, and we have 14, 14 of those uh, in the whole creation uh, in, in old Brahmadi. So we have 14. So we, we are actually now, we are in the seventh one. And uh, we have seven more, we'll be coming to complete one day of Brahma. So now if you analyze this, you can see how uh, small we look like. At times when we get knowledge, we, 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 our brain becomes bigger, bigger, and bigger. Our ego goes bigger and bigger. But when we study Vedic knowledge, we, more, we become more humble by, uh, by the comprehending the amount of time and the vast numbers. You know? So that's the objective of getting this knowledge. It's not for us to uh, think, oh, we know more, but we, it's a question of us to become more humble by knowing actually how this whole world works, how this whole Vedic cosmology and the whole creation is. And this is the objective of our uh, of Srila Prabhupada to, 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 to expose this. And if you see our headquarter in uh, Mayapur, the, this uh, Vedic temple, of course, this, this very great temple that's being built in Mayapur in Hard Culture, there will be a big, uh, uh, inside the temple, they will, create, they will gain to devise, I mean, design the whole Vedic cosmology there and explain the different parts of the universe there. So I'll request everybody, maybe when this thing's pandemic is over, by next year, there's an opening. So please uh, try to go to the temple, uh, visit the temple in our headquarter. So as we can, uh, we can see this in person. Uh, Johnny, will you raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. So you know, how we have all these you guys over here. So I was wondering, um, like in Kali Yuga, our soul, it like, it takes different forms within Kali Yuga. So does our soul like also like go into the other Yugas or does it end at the end of Kali Yuga like that? Yeah. So you see, it depends the state of which we leave our body. If our, if our body, if we leave our body in a state of consciousness, yet yam yam bhapi smaran bhavam, right? This state, you, whatever state you leave your body, that state determines what type of body you're going to take. And it can be in a different yuga. It can be different because we have, we have different universes going on at the same times, right? We have billions of universes in the whole cosmos. Now, if you are in this particular universe where it is Kali Yuga now, in other universe, right? 
there it's it, in that particular earth there to be different yug it can be in satyug or dwapar right so some people have desire oh i should have been born some people think like that i should have been born in satyug this kali yug is not meant for me right and then naturally if you have this desire to come back again and be born in satyug you be sent in that particular yuga that particular universe where satyug is going on so it's all depends upon what you desire that's why you should be very careful when you're devotee to to really think what we desire now the whole idea is not to be in prison is this material world because don't forget that 25% of this material world 25 of the creation is material world 75% is spiritual world so the whole idea for us is not to come back again is material world but to be to be free to go back to the spiritual world where we belong originally so just like thinking like oh uh, jaise koi uh, uh, keh di hai theek hai jo alag alag prakar ke keh di hai first class prisoner hai second class prisoner hai third class क्लास प्रेजेंट है और जो तीसरा वाला क्लास प्रेजेंट है वो सोचा है मैं अच्छे व्यवहार करूंगा ताकि मैं फर्स्ट क्लास प्रेजेंट में जाऊंगा राइट दे थिंकिंग लाइक दैट ओ आई कैन बिहेव नाइसली सो आई कैन गो बिकम अ फर्स्ट क्लास प्रेजेंट बट दैट्स नॉट द ऑब्जेक्टिव आवर एग्जिस्टेंस आवर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू गेट आउट ऑफ दिस मैटेरियल वर्ल्ड टू गो इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड वेयर वी ओरिजिनली बिलोंग ओके सो आई थिंक दैट आंसर योर क्वेश्चन कैन यू रीड द लास्ट वन ब्रह्मा हैज बीन असाइंड Brahma has been assigned hundred years of age in their respective domain. In the given ratio of one day and night of Brahma is equal to two thousand Mahayugas, and one day of Devas is equal to three hundred sixty days on Earth. Brahma's lifespan is known as Mahakalpa, at the end of which all the universes are completely destroyed. In the next cycle, another Brahma comes into being, and thus the cycle goes on at all levels, both micro and macro. Okay, good. Now let's see the next part, next slide. Yeah. So this is uh, the Vedic time cycle in general. This is like a diagram. You can see Brahma ji, and the, everything is calculated uh, according to life of Brahma. And life of Brahma is a bit small here, but it says it it, it reads like three hundred eleven point zero four trillion years, mm? which includes thirty six thousand kalpas days of Brahma and an equal number of nights. So this the whole thing, the whole life. Of Brahma is three hundred eleven point zero four trillion years, and that's given in the Bhagavad Gita. So let let me uh, give you a a sap notice of this chart. Uh, I wrote it down here, the whole chart. And who is a brave person who wants to read over that? <laughs> let us see who can wants to read this. Anybody wants to read this one? Who raise a hand? Let me see. Samera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe you can read half. Up to ten, we have fifteen. Samira can read with ten, and then the other uh, somebody else can read on the next ten. Okay, Samira. Uh, first, Satyug includes junctures one point seven to eight million. Second, Treta Yug includes junctures one point two nine six million. Third, Dwapar Yug includes junctures zero point eight six four oh. million. Fourth, Kaliyog includes junctures zero point four three two million. Uh, fifth, one Chaturyog or Divyog, four yogas four point three two million. One Manvantra, seventy one Chaturyogs, seventy one into four point three two, which is three zero six point seven two million. Seventh, one Manvantra juncture, Sandhya. Interval between one wonders, one point seven to eight million. Eighth, one day time of Brahma, fourteen one one wonders, fourteen into three zero six point seven two plus fifteen junctures, fifteen into one point seven to eight, four point two three two billion. Yeah, so Nine, one day of one day one day of Brahma is four point thirty two billion years. Yeah, very good. Next. Ninth time passed in current Chaturyug. Satyug one point seven to eight plus Treta Yug one point two nine six plus Dwapar Yug zero point eight six plus five thousand years of Kali Yug. Uh, three point eight nine three million. Tenth okay. time passed in current day of Brahma one nine seven two point nine four nine million. So thank you. So now you can see now the current time passed now is it's uh, 
1972.949 million years. So that's the exact how many mana mantras, six mana mantras, plus 20, which is plus 27 chaturyugas, mana mantra junctures, all these at time are calculated exactly. The time remaining, now the remaining time also is being given in the scripture. And the remaining time of Brahmaji is uh, 2347.051 million years to go. Uh, so that's a very exact figure. Anybody who wants to read the next one? Uh, where's Himanshu? Himanshu, you want to read that one? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Good. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, Manvantras. Manvantras. Uh, 11. No, you, 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 you oh, started yeah. from 11. Time remaining in the current day of Brahma. Okay. Uh, time remaining in current day of Brahma 2347.0051 million. One day time of Brahma time passed in current day. Age of current Manu Vavesh Vavesh Manu. Yeah, yeah. Vavesh Muni. Uh, time passed in current Manvantra 120 point 300, 533 million Chatur Yugas 116.64 plus time passed in current Chatur Yuga 3.869 uh, 93 1 Mahakalpa 311.04 trillion, trillion one day time of Brahma 4.32 times 2 day plus night 30 days in month times 12 months in year times 100, 100 year current age of Brahma and universe 155.527 trillion, trillion 50 years of Brahma 4.32.2 times 30 times 12 times 50 is equal to 15 15 55 20 billion plus time passed in current day of Brahma 1.9972949 billion time remaining until end of current Brahma and universe one one Mahakalpa minus current age of Brahma 155.51803 trillion. Wow. This is amazing. Uh, anybody uh, have ever seen this before? Anybody? No, Prabhuji, it's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that much. is really uh, special, right? One point one hundred thirty-five point five one eight zero three trillion years. The time remaining until the end of Brahma, the universe of this whole universe. So Brahma, uh, Samara is asking this question: How is the position of Brahma decided? The position of Brahma decided is. Um, uh, you you also can become Brahma. Any any human human you can become a Brahma when when you uh, practice uh, your austerity in area. Sometimes you know all these uh, positions of the demigods. Anybody can can come to that except Lord Shiva. Nobody can become Lord Shiva, but uh, we can take that position, and uh, uh, we can understand that during the night Brahma sleeps. And most planets are submerged in the water devastation. And the end, end of night, Brahma awakens, and another day of uh, one thousand cycles commence. So this this is a this is a way the dissolution and the devastation, partial devastation, or all uh, reappearance, all this happens like that uh, in this um, in this fashion. But uh, uh, and we don't have only one Brahma. We have in, in, in different millions of universes, and we have. Uh, different types of Brahma. Now, one Brahma, uh, our Brahma in this uh, planet, planet where we are right now, in this earth where we are, in this sorry, in this universe where we are, not earth, in this universe, it has four heads because there's four direct directions. But there are other Brahmas who has sixteen heads, eight, twenty-seven heads. Um, it go uh, like fifty-two heads, fifty-six heads, seventy-two heads. There's so many other types of where the direction there, the universe is more complicated. There are different directions. The concept of space is more complicated. Here, it's very much more simple. We have only four, four, dire four directions, which, which we, if you count the north, east, and it, it makes like eight directions, means uh, practically. So, uh, this position of Brahma is decided by the Lord itself and uh, uh, it, accordingly to different types of universes. 
So it depends where we, with which type and what uh, degree of advancement that particular uh, soul has, so as you can get that position of Brahma. Uh, if you are very, you are following the rules and regulations of your life in a particular uh, yuga, and then uh, and then and then you you achieve certain level of consciousness which is quite high, like Brahma, then you can get that position fulfilled. Yes, uh, uh, Janavi, you raise your hand. You have a question. Yeah. So. Um, is the person who's in charge of all of these universes and everything Lord Vishnu in like each of the universes there? Yeah, so in each of the universes, remember we have Garbhadaksha Vishnu, uh, Vish, Lord Vishnu is there, uh, and out of his uh, uh, Kamal Nabi, right, uh, the Brahma is appears. So we have uh, different types of Vishnu, right? We talk about that. I don't think we did. Yeah, we talk in the beginning. We, we talk about Mahavishnu. Uh, which is um, sleeping in the causal ocean when he breathes in and out so many millions and millions of universes comes out and in each of those universes there is this three purusha of the right? Mahavishnu is one of them then we have Gabadaksha Vishnu which is uh, who is uh, uh, who is lying down on the Ananta Shesh and Lakshmi Mata is usually you see the picture Lakshmi Mata is massaging his feet and then from his uh, navel uh, Brahma it, it appears. So that's uh, the Garbha Daksha. And then we have Shira Daksha Vishnu, which is in Shira Sagar, where all the uh, demigods, they go and approach uh, him to come and take incarnation. The Dasavatar is a product. It comes from the uh, uh, Shira Daksha Vishnu. So uh, all these creations are like that. The ultimately, you can see it all comes from the Mahavishnu and the cultural ocean all these different universes. I hope this answers your question. Okay. Any other people have any question on this one? Not yet. So let us go on. Uh, we have to finish this. So let's see in uh, the Bhagavad Gita what uh, uh, she Jack Krishna, you want to, uh, we want to welcome Jack Krishna after a long crime. Jack Krishna, you want to read that? Jack Krishna. I'm going to see. Yes, Prabhuji. You can see properly? Yes. Okay, try to read that one. O son of Kunti. Yes. O son of Kunti, at the end of millennium, after 311.040.040 year, our trivial infestation enter into nature and at beginning of another millennium by my potency, I create them Lord Sri Krishna said in Gita. The 100 years of Brahma life are divided into two parts of first half and second. The first half of the duration of Brahma life is already over and the second half is now current. The present Manu, who is in the seventh, is called Vashwat, the son of Vivashwan. 27 views of his age has passed on. Krishna said, your particular universe has a diameter of 4 billion, billion miles. miles. Therefore, it is the first of all universes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. So Krishna said uh, uh, to, to Brahmaji, because Brahmaji actually he was thinking he is only Brahma. Uh, uh, and then, uh, then Krishna said, your particular universe has a, a diameter of 4 billion miles. Therefore, it is the smallest of all universes. Now, can you imagine there are other universes who are more bigger than that. Yeah. So that's uh, one thing that uh, we have to understand, that our knowledge is very limited and our conception also is very limited. So by seeing all these, uh, these, these quotes are from Bhagavad Gita, from uh, Srimad Bhavatam, from Chaitanya Chaitanya, we can see when we read and we study the scripture, then we really understand the real place where we are. And... I encourage all of you to become scientists, to go, uh, maybe astro you know, work in NASA, work in, uh, the, in the Indian uh, astrology place where you can, you know, pre uh, uh, study nicely and then become somebody who can, you know, study these things and share this knowledge with people and, and, and to understand the real way how it is, how this whole creation works, you know. Now, let's see this one. Who wants to read this one? Uh, uh, what do who do we have now? Do, who didn't read? Uh, Divisha, okay, Divisha, you read or okay, Divisha, come on, we can read that one, Divisha. 
Our universe is the smallest with a diameter of 4 billion miles and lifespan of 311.04 trillion years. And this is the time that passes on planet Earth when Mahavishnu, a mere expansion of Lord Krishna, exhales or inhales just once. When Mahavishnu exhales, millions of universes come out from the pores on his gigantic body and when he inhales, all the universes go back into his body. This is how great Lord Krishna is. God is not unknown or an invisible force. Lord Krishna is the greatest person who is completely known and seen by those who are qualified. Thank you, Divisha. So we can see that how Krishna himself, uh, the concept of God, people say, oh, God is impersonal or whatever it is. Yeah, it's part of it. But, the re but this is how God is, is controlling, creating his whole creation, the whole process uh, is exactly managed and very particularly established in a way. Right? So where we can see now our universe is only 4 billion miles. There are so many other universes that I can explain, which are much more bigger. Now, I want to ask you this question. How do we know, how do we calculate the lifespan of our Earth, which is written here? 311.040 trillion years. How did we get this uh, number? Anybody who wants to try? How did we get this number here? You can raise your hand. If you have no answer, you can raise your hand. The question is how we came up with 311.040 trillion years for the age of our universe. After try to think about what we talk about uh, during this past 30, 40 minutes. Just think about what we talk about, then you will get the answer. Okay, Divisha, raise your hand. Okay, Divisha, you can type. Can you guys, can you type me in the chat box the answer because I want other people also to answer. So yes, can you guys just start to chat uh, in the chat box, just uh, answer me in the chat box. So the question is, how did we came up with this uh, uh, figure, which Personally. is 311.040 trillion years? Personally, uh, they have to just, yeah, they have just to I'll write the answer in the chat box. So I'll have, to, and then I'll read it. Yeah, but everyone, to everyone or only to you? No, to me. They can just, okay. just send it to me, to everyone. It doesn't matter, but uh, to me, it's better. <laughs> Just send it. Okay. Yeah. Come on, come on. Just. Okay. Uh, Samara, uh, Divisha said, mm, I think it's all for you guys. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Come on, come on. Just type some answer. I want you guys to. Uh, Jay Krishna, type KJ. Uh, how did we came up with this? 311.040 trillion years. Okay, Samara, Mahakalpa, okay, let's see. Let, there's one answer, very, very simple answer. Actually, when you when you analyze all this, it's very simple. There's a very simple to this answer to this question. I gave you a hint. It's very, very simple. It's one word answer. Come on, Janu, try. How did, how did we come? Prabhuji, uh, I will try at the end if you okay. would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can send also. No problem. RC, Samara, Yemanshu. Yemanshu, try, Kijay. A second. <laughs> Okay, you got that. Somebody got that. This Divisha's lifespan of Brahma. Very nice. Actually, thank you, Divisha. That's it. So we calculate all our calculation is based on the lifespan of Brahma because we know that the universe, as long as the universe, as long as Brahma is alive, the whole universe will be there. When when uh, Brahma passes away, the whole universe is being destroyed. So the lifespan of the universe. Would be based on I like that fan of Brahma. I need it. Okay, so that's uh, that's it's the whole idea. Mataji, Rachel Mataji, you have muted muted muted. Can I say? Have you answered the question? Beja. 
नहीं प्रभु जी नहीं नहीं आ नहीं तो ठीक है सो नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड आप लोग समझ गए कि ये सब कैलकुलेशन ब्रह्मा जी का आयु से जोड़े हुए है बिना ब्रह्मा जी का हम लोग कैलकुलेशन नहीं कर सकते सो दैट्स अ होल टाइम दैट्स व्हाई टाइम एंड आयु इन स्पेस एवरीथिंग इज लिंक्ड टुगेदर सो अगेन दे आर कंक्लूजन दैट्स व्हाई आई एम कंक्लूडिंग नाउ दे आर साइकल्स ऑफ क्रिएशन एनिलेशन ईच ऑफ द 311.04 trillion years duration and in the current cycle our universe has existed for 155.52197 trillion years and we still have another 155.5180 trillion years to go before the end of the universe and the current cycle okay please the universe the lifespan of the universe is directly related to the life of a person called brahma he is the first living being in the universe created by lord krishna brahma lives for hundred of his years called a mahakalpa and his one day 12 hours is called a kalpa which is 4.32 billion years in duration thus his 100 years is 311.040 years on planet earth it's very simple we explain like that so that's a very good way yes sir janavi what's your question Oh, well, could you go back to the other slide? Okay, that's it. This um, one hundred fifty-five trillion years—that's not for only Kali Yuga, right? That's not for Kali Yuga. That's for the age of the universe. That includes all the Mahakalpas and everything in there. Okay. Yeah, we not. So for uh, <clears throat> probably so for this uh, universe. So I think fifty percent, exact fifty percent of Brahma Ji's age passed, right? So fifty yeah, years. Yeah, because passed, because you, you know why? And, and uh, yeah, and why? And, why? And, uh, sorry. Why? Yeah, and I, I mean, uh, I'm just uh, telling because like, uh, because because first days, be, huh? First days because, started. No, no, no. One, look, look. Brahma Ji's age is in the fourth menu. We are in the seventh menu. So it's half done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have to understand that Brahma in one in Brahma's lives there are fourteen manavantaras, fourteen yes. manus, and then we are mm-hmm. in the seventh manavantara, which is the middle. So we are actually in the middle one. That's why you see this this um, this figure, which is one one five five point five two one nine seven, is almost uh, uh, half of the uh, whole thing. Uh, which is yeah, I mean, now we have <laughs> yeah, we 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 uh, uh, in Bhakti Shastri. Uh, it was there so i just wanted to yeah 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 so, so the way- 50 percent pass and in the first day of brahma we are as of now yeah i think first so year are- first day and first chaturyuga yeah so let us yeah. see that again uh it's here it's here it's what you were asking is here the current age of brahma is 50 years that's 50% of his 100 years old and he is now Five hours, twenty-eight minutes, and forty-eight seconds into the first day of his fifty-one year. Okay, <laughs> exactly calculated. Five hours, twenty-eight minutes, and forty-nine seconds into his first day of his fifty-first year. Okay, fifty-first year. So. one day of brahma which is 12 hours is now when we say 5 hours for 28 minutes it's not our earthly hours okay it's not hours it's it's a different one day of brahma is 12 hours that type of hours we're talking about one day of brahma is 12 hours which is divided into 14 parts called the manavantaras there is a partial creation at the start of a new manavantara and there's a partial annihilation at the end of each manavantara and between each manavantara there is a juncture called sandhya which is 1.728 million years and within each manavantara there is a different manu the first human within each manavantara there are 71 chaturyugas each of 4.32 million years duration in each manavantara the duration of each manavantara is 306.72 million years within each chatur yuga there are four yugas satyug uh, tetra dwapar and kali 
and we are 122 sorry we are 120.533 million years into the current manavantara and this is also the age of the current manu which is who is vaivashavata manu so now this is so good i'm uh, if you guys are there take a screenshot of this slide it is very important if people ask you you know exactly and there's no other there's no other society or or i, I say if i say religion or whoever any books or knowledge you won't find this anywhere it's in the bhagavat this whole details and and the chitamamrita even the the jewish tradition they can't calculate that exact where we are right now because we have a point we have a solid point of reference which they don't have we calculate everything in terms of brahma the whole the creator himself no in the bible no in the quran no in a torah any type of religious scripture there's no description as exact and as this one we are currently 5000 years into kali yuga of the 28th chatur yuga of the 7th manavantara in the first day of brahma of his 51st year so this detail structural timings uh, knowledge of the universe of the past future can can only come from god and prove that sanatan dharma all right sanatan dharma the eternal religion as an established by the greatest person krishna himself okay and that's the end i'm ending with this two shloka from the Bhagavad gita the whole cosmic order krishna says is under my order he's on a, my direction and under my will it is automatically manifested again and again and under my will it is annihilated and this is Bhagavad gita 9.8 and then last message is fools deride me when i descend in the human form they do not know my transcendent nature are the supreme lord of all that be so uh, please uh, take this uh, krishna conscious very seriously and then make your life sublime and put this knowledge into practice so thank you for listening Babaji, uh, just a second uh, i'm just sharing this one slide uh, just a second so oh which which one you want me to go no no no, no. i i i'll do so this one i was i was talking about i'll i'll share yeah 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 so this is yeah, very I nice that, understand i yeah. had that uh, structure of the universe and uh, and the, yeah. the, the one that i have here this is where i got it actually the details uh -huh. yeah yeah so it is yes. nice one I, i'll share it uh, if you want yeah. yeah please yeah please share it to to everybody you can yeah, say so that everybody can have a look it is that. i mean where where we are as of today we can yeah. understand from this yeah and also prabhu ji i learned in the chaitanya charitamrita class and i might not be fully understood but i uh, learned that uh, it is the afternoon time and only in this manvantara uh, krishna uh, uh, takes birth and chaitanya yeah. mahaprabhu no yeah. other kali yuga yeah yeah no so no no and it is like uh, uh -huh. it's, it's like this krishna appears in only in one day of brahma you see krishna appears only in one day of brahma and in one day of, of brahma we have all these uh, 1000 times all these chatur yugas so if you can see in one day of Brahma, if we are talking about one day of Brahma, right? So we have these uh, four yugas, which is 4.32 million years. You multiply by 1,000 in one day of Brahma. And one night is another 1,000. So if we can say 4.32 million years multiplied by 1,000 years, and Krishna appears only once. You see? So that's why we are very, very fortunate that we are born in this uh, era, in this um, Devi Yuga, where Krishna has appeared. And whenever Krishna appears, then Mahaprabhu appears in the following Kali Yuga. Yeah, yes. I think, I think, I think Mata is talking, uh, talking about maybe uh, Chetan Mahaprabhu's incarnation. So yeah, Mahaprabhu, is, yeah, Mahaprabhu always Kali Yuga. appears. Mahaprabhu uh, always appears Krishna after Chetan. Lord Krishna. Yeah. When yeah. Krishna appears, it appears on the Kali Yuga. So we are very fortunate to be in this uh, uh, in, say, in this Divya Yuga where Krishna appears. 
They say he doesn't because he doesn't he appears only once in the day of Brahma. What about the uh, the night of Brahma? Uh, the next thing he won't he won't appear. He has different type of incarnation. So we are cons we should be consider ourselves very very fortunate, and we should take to this uh, bhakti seriously. That we just had Krishna recently <laughs> appearing in our Yogi Yoga. Huh? So. Uh, we can conclude with this. Any question anybody has? Jai Krishna? Koi prashna? Any question? Himanshu? Okay. No prashna. So, uh, happy Akshayati to everyone there in India. Please uh, uh, continue. Uh, with bhakti process, take to this process very seriously and study the Vedic literature nicely and as well uh, study uh, your whatever you're studying in whichever class you are and I wish you all the best and all success in your studies and Hare Krishna and the next week we will have uh, uh, I think uh, next week we're going to have our we're going to announce right uh, Hare Prabhu we're going to yeah, have so next week uh, we will have uh, nursing yagya as well as uh, on Saturday yagya. Yeah, as well as uh, Vyas Puja. So yeah, yeah we will celebrate uh, Vyas Puja as well as uh, nursing yagya. So uh, we'll combine all three groups, uh, Dauji, Kishore, and Kanaya group. So we will have session on Saturday and Sunday both. Next yeah. week. So it's please no join details. everybody. Yeah. All the Kishore group are requested to join for the Yagna because we're doing this for India. We want the uh, people in India to be safe and to be, you know, with this pandemic, we are organizing this Yagna and we request everybody to have uh, a, a, a small Havan Kunda at their home and we can perform the Yagna together uh, same time. So same time, it's uh, our classes starts at 7.30. And uh, maybe we'll start a bit early. What do you think, uh, Prabhu? It will be 7 to 7 to 7 to 7 to It will be Indian 60 time, uh, 6 p.m. IST, I think, yeah. So 6 p.m. India. Okay. Yeah, For us, of, it will yeah. be 9. For us, it will be... Uh... Okay. Yeah, because uh, as Prabhuji said, like uh, the yagya should be completed before uh, before sun sunset. Sun sunset. So most of the students will be in India. So we'll do it uh, at. I mean, we'll start at six p.m. Yeah. So we do Nashinga yagya for everybody in India uh, next Saturday, six p.m. your time in India. So be if you're at home, have a Havan kund. How some ghee and some magri. I'll be sending a list. Uh, I'll post this list today uh, of the items that we need for the yagna. And I'll just re, uh, send the instruction as well. So at first, uh, first, uh, as I'm finishing this call, I'm posting the list. And you don't need yeah. to have all this in detail. Sara kuch ni hai, kuch basic cheez hai. Havan sa magri hona chahiye, ghee hona chahiye. Ye basic cheez hai. Aur kuch agni mein Prashad ke rup mein daan pracholik kane kane wo to aap kis icha pe hai so it's up to you but the this is very long but you don't have to have all these things but the basic thing is you have to have ghee you have to have a little flour and you have to have something to offer the fire and, the, and of course and the samagri okay these are four basic things so I will send a detailed message yeah I will send a detailed message for to all of you okay any question so please, 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 I want every student for next Saturday to participate in Yagna because this Yagna is for local yarn. It's for the Sarva Lok, means for everybody. And especially in India, we need help there for people to feel better and stronger and to fight against the pandemic. So we'll pray to Nashinga Dev and Nashinga Dev will come and bless us and give us a strength so as we can face this pandemic. So the Yagna is happening on Saturday. And on Sunday, we were celebrating uh, our Guru Maharaj, uh, Navayagenda Swami's uh, um, Vyas Puja. So, 
uh, we'll request everybody to to participate if they want to. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you for the participating. I think uh, everybody enjoyed today. So thank you again. So see you all next week. Radhe Radhe Sablo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.